All right, guys, so we showed you cutting up the goose outside and how to get the breast out. Once you're done with that, um, you're left with these breast pieces. The next step is to wash those breasts off. So before you do that, let me tell you quickly about some of the things you're gonna need for this step. So a lot of people think that goose jerky or duck jerky, it doesn't taste very good, it's kind of gamey. Um, I tell you what, the trick to goose jerky or any jerky with a gamey taste is the prep process. You wanna make sure that you are brining this stuff for 24 to 48 hours. Um, so we're getting prepared for the brine now and then we'll come back later and we'll actually do the jerky. Um, so what I've got is just some Morton salt. Um, I have a bowl right here. That's to put your um, goose breast in with some water and salt. Um, I have a fillet knife. I like, um, And then I have the goose breast, obviously, a cutting board. And then in just a minute, I will get out the jerky slicer. Um, a lot of people will brine the breast whole, but I like to brine the breast after I slice it into jerky pieces. If you think about it, there's more surface area for that water and salt to touch, and that'll help pull out more of that blood and the gamey taste. So that's where we're gonna start, is by washing the goose breast. We're just gonna wash the breast off. So again, we tried to avoid getting any sort of um, feathers or anything on here. So now we're just trying to wash off whatever excess there is, feathers, etc. It's gonna get plenty of uh, washes later, but that's pretty much all you need right there. And then we'll put it on our cutting board. And then make sure you save your Ziploc bag because you're gonna use that in about 48 hours for the cure. All right, so now we're back at our cutting board and we have both of our goose breasts here. And you can see just kind of the silver skin hanging out on the breast. I try to cut that off every time I eat goose breast. Um, any of this silver skin right here um, is what I'm trying to trim down. That's just gonna make it taste less gamey. It's gonna give you a better finished product. So um, the goal now is to kind of just peel up the skin and just sort of slice it off. Um, I'm definitely no expert at this, but basically you just wanna to try to get the thinnest piece that you can off of there um, to expose this breast. The other thing that it does is it makes the breast meat kind of porous. So when you do go to cure the meat, um, it's actually gonna be easier for the salt and the brine to get in there um, and to help kind of pull out that bloodiness and the, t the gamey taste to the meat. So. All right, so this part, here's that tenderloin we talked about on the underside, and I'm just gonna trim that away from the breast. Um, you can make that one piece of jerky in itself and probably the best jerky in the lot. You can see on the top here, we've got it mostly cleaned away. There's not much silver skin left. It's just kind of a clean raw breast um, on the underside. Now we got to work on that and get some of these fatty pieces off and do the same thing. All right, so here's the bottom of that breast now, and you can see it's completely clear of most of the silver skin. Um, there may be a tiny little piece right here but for the most part that's about as clean as it's going to get for a goose breast so um, that one is done we can go ahead and move that over to our bowl uh, as a temporary holding spot for that all right so we've got this pretty well cleaned front side and back um, so now we're ready for the jerky slicer so i'm going to go ahead and bust that out and show you guys the next step here so i picked up this cabela's jerky slicer just a little while back and it works great as a manual slicer. You can also get an attachment if you have a KitchenAid, um, but this guy works well for me. It's easy to clean. Um, one tip before you get started, I'm right-handed, so the handle is gonna be on my right side. Uh, you wanna rotate that thing clockwise. Um, what's happening is there's little, basically pizza cutters inside that are very, very thin, and they're meshed up against each other. And when you turn it clockwise on the right-handed side, um, your right-handed side, it will pull the meat into the slicer. If you go backwards, it can still cut, but it's trying to push the meat out and it's, it's not very accurate. So on the right-handed side, you'll go clockwise. And if you're left-handed, you'll go counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take one of my pieces of goose breast and I think about it like, a, like an arrowhead. I'm gonna take that arrow down into the slicer. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it. Now you should probably use tongs for this part. Um, I'm very careful with my hands, but you shouldn't ever put your hands in a jerky slicer. It will cut you up super good. 
So there it is, gone into the slicer. I'm just gonna rotate it slowly to the right. And what you are left with is perfect slices for jerky. I don't actually put the tenderloins in through the slicer. Those are thin enough um, to be their own piece. So I'll leave those alone. If I have some small chunks of meat that I cut off previously, I'll just kind of drop those in there and give them one good go. And they'll come out as smaller little like nuggets. Those are kind of like my testing pieces. So I can kind of see those ones are gonna get drier faster. So once those are dry, the other pieces are probably pretty close to done. Um, so then we take our next piece, again, arrow pointing down, and I'm just gonna lay it into the slicer there. And again, clockwise rotation, don't put your hand in, and out comes some nice jerky slices. There is all my jerky pieces. I don't have anything left in here. So that is the slicing part. And then we're just gonna wanna take these and just transfer them over to our bowl. Now we're gonna wanna run some water through this and get out the initial blood, um, just kinda drain it out the best we can. Also any bird shot um, that's in there, any of that steel, uh, you wanna get that out now too. All right, so again, I'm just turning on the cold water here and just kinda mixing the pieces around. And you'll notice in the beginning, you're gonna see a lot of blood coming up with these. So I probably do this four or five times. I'm trying to get as much out as possible before the brining process. The pieces will start to get a little bit more pale than they were originally. And that's because you are getting that blood out of the meat. And I do this about five times, so I'll speed that up. All right, so that is that part. All right, so this next step of the process is the actual brining process. So you wanna brine with salt and water because what's gonna happen is that salt's gonna help pull out the blood in the meat. It's gonna give you a better tasting product, but you don't wanna overdo the salt. And the last probably four, five, eight hours of the brining process, I use fresh water instead of salt water. And that's just to help get the salt out of the meat so that it's not super salty at your end product because you have to remember you're adding nitrates, nitrites, um, you're adding uh, seasoning, you're adding curing salts and things to make the meat safe. And that's also gonna make it taste saltier, add more sodium, you don't want it too salty. I've had jerky like that before and you just end up throwing it away. Probably that's good for salt. Just add a little bit of salt in there. Don't go too high with the water. And you just kind of want to mix it up. That's getting all that salt around so not one piece is more salty than another. Good. All right, so now this is going to go in the fridge. You can leave it covered or uncovered. Um, we're going to do that for about four hours. Then come back and change it out. All right, guys, so here we are the next day. It's been a full 24 hours that this meat has been in the brine. And this is, again, the freshwater brine. Um, it's been sitting for about eight hours. But what I want you to notice is just how clean the water is. Um, the meat has turned pale now. It was a dark red. And there's really not much blood in the bowl. Um, so that's going to result in a way better tasting product. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and drain this bowl out. And then we'll start weighing out the portions of meat so that we can use our jerky cure and seasoning. All right, so the jerky seasoning that I'm using is the High Mountain Jerky Seasoning. This particular one is Wild Goose. And then I also have the Cajun Blend. And the last one I have here is Cracked Pepper and Garlic. So every year I can't remember which flavor I like best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make three batches and I'm gonna dry them on separate racks. So the top rack might be the wild goose, then Cajun, and then the bottom one will be the cracked pepper and garlic. So that's kind of what I plan to do. The best way I know how to tell you to mix this stuff up, there is accurate information um, printed in the directions that tells you exactly what measurements to do for how many pounds of goose. Um, it says right here, you know, for one pound you use one and a half teaspoons of the darker colored seasoning and two teaspoons of the cure. So um, the best way to do it is to measure it out because if you just eyeball it, you're gonna get sometimes a rough batch that has too much salt to it. So um, I think we probably have less than a pound here total, maybe two pounds, but I'm gonna measure it out here and then I'll try to see if we can make three bags out of it. 
All right, so you got 0.63 pounds right there. I have a feeling that that's probably going to be about one third of the batch. Check it out, 0.63. And then the last bit, huh, surprised myself, 0.66. All right, so those are all roughly 0.65 pounds of meat each bag. And you're going to take one of those bags of meat and go ahead and throw that in the bowl. Okay, then we want to decide what seasoning we're going to do. So for this guy, let's just say we're going to do the mesquite blend for wild goose. So I'll pull out both packs here. They make a little shaker actually. Um, it's kind of nice. So pop the lid off the shaker. Comes with a little um, kind of like salt and pepper shaker, but with bigger holes. And then you'll take your dark colored seasoning. And now remember, these all have their own instructions. So certain seasoning you don't need as much for. Um, so this guy says for the mesquite, we do two and a half teaspoons per pound of the darker colored and two teaspoons of the cure. So we're gonna do probably like one and a half of cure and we're probably gonna do just two teaspoons of the regular seasoning. So then I just put this lid back on like so, put my hand over the lid. I'm just gonna kind of shake it up, make sure it's really mixed in there. Perfect, just like that. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is just kind of sprinkle it on here and then rotate the meat and sprinkle it again. And we wanna just make sure that we're getting it all over the meat. All right, so we're gonna zip that up. I try to push out all the air so that when you work it around, you don't have to deal with air bubbles. And then that is going to cure for 24 hours in the fridge. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other two batches, load them up in the fridge, and then we'll pull them out in 24 hours and we're ready to start cooking them on the dehydrator. All right guys, good morning. We have let the dehydrator sit all night long and we are left with some amazing goose jerky pieces. And then how you test these is you can kind of just bend them in half and if they just kind of crack open like that, you know they're done. There's some in here that aren't quite finished yet. Um, those would be the ones on the bottom here. Um, you can kind of tell this one is really malleable. It's still a little red. So that one, those are little thicker pieces. We're gonna leave those in a little while longer. So I'm gonna put a couple of pieces of these in bags and we're getting ready to go hunt. That is how you make a really solid tasting goose jerky. Hope you enjoyed, make some of your own. Let me know how it turns out in the comments below. So thanks for checking out the channel. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, go ahead and click this free subscribe button right here. You can also check out our next video over there or our most recent uploads just above my head. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time on CO Fish Pro.